have some strength. And that, that tawakkul, like you said, blind belief, yes, okay, must be there, okay? Uh, and then you will really see the fruits of it, okay? So that's just, you know, so showing respect to teachers, to elders, and those teachers are also, you know, people who are not necessarily teachers of deen, but maybe national curriculum subjects, like math, so, you know, teachers are teacher. If you learn something from them, you know, they're your teachers. And so um, that must be remembered. Um, as for today, we want to, um, you know, maybe push on, even though we were speaking about, you know, Shama'il and the benefits of it. Slowly we'll get there, inshallah ta'ala. Um, I read an ayat to you yesterday, which was trying to put focus on the fact that it was important, okay, to learn about the life of the Prophet And the proof for that was this ayah, which is from Surah Al-Hujurat, Okay, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Right, with them, Shaitan Rajim. Wa'lamu, from in a no, learn. Okay, no. Wa'lamu anna fikum Rasulullah. Okay, a, that no, verily amongst you is a messenger of Allah. Now, you know, this is telling the Sahaba, okay, that you have Rasulullah amongst you. Now, we don't have him here amongst us. Okay. Some people, Allah shows them, you know, they might see, maybe they see him in their dreams. Some have seen him perhaps in a wakeful state, it's possible, it happens. But generally, Rasulullah Sallallahu is not amongst us. He was amongst the Sahaba. So when this verse was revealed, a no, O Sahaba, amongst you is the messenger of Allah. So that means, what does that mean? If you have anything, any matter, okay, and you want to ask about it, then go back to the Messenger of Allah. So this ayah has to be put in context. If you put it in context, so it talks about there's more than one narration, perhaps a hypocrite who outwardly testified and believed but inwardly did not, and a, a Yehudi, okay, a Jewish man, who then had a difference of, a, uh, they differed on something. He outwardly the Munafiq believed in the Prophet so the Yehudi believed in the prophets that came before, but when it came to making a decision, they decided to go to a, a fortune teller, okay, or a kahid, instead of going to Rasul Sallallahu hey, So the verse came down, no amongst you is the messenger of Allah, why are you going anywhere else for? If you've got Allah and His Rasul, if you've got Quran and Sunnah of Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you must not go anywhere else. If you have a question, if you have a hajat, okay, if you have a need, then go to the book of Allah and go to the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And so this is, you know, the point here. Now, um, I wanted to bring about uh, or mention the hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, okay, which emphasizes the importance of sunnah of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam, okay. And it's a long hadith narrated by um, Sina Abir. Um, Najih ibn Arbad al-Sariyah Abu Najih ibn Arbad al-Sariyah radiallahu ta'ala anhu um, this sahabi um, who said wa'adhana Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam maw'idha okay, and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam gave us a maw'idha wa'ad, admonition he gave a reminder okay, maw'idha wajilat minha al-qulub okay, a, it was such a Strong kitab in a sermon, reminder, wajilat min al qulub, okay, that the hearts became frightened, scared from it, okay, wadarafat min al uyul, and the tears started to flow from the eye, a, it was solid, it was real strong khutbah. Sometimes you hear that, don't you? The khatib really shouting and you know, to, talking about certain topics which are make you cry, maybe death or so forth, you know. One of the real, you know, strong sort of takrees, you know. A heart got frightened and tears started to flow from the eyes. Um, ya Rasulullah. So we said, Ya Rasulullah, Ka'annaha um, maw'idhatu muwadda' It's as if this is the admonition of somebody about to leave. As if this is your last reminder, as if you're leaving us. Somebody who's about to leave, they give you a very strong reminder, okay? Um, you know, somebody close to death might grab you, so put the lesson to me. 
You know, there's no joking here now. You know, listen to me. I, I remember this incredible woman, um, subhanAllah. Yeah. She was from um, Leeds. And I heard this from um, Sheikh, Sheikh Amr, you know, the Qari. He's, he's got a friend called Faisal, half his Faisal. It's his grandmother, and I know the family really well. And um, she's a Kashmiri woman, you know, old woman who was in hospital. She was about to die. And it was, um, I think it was a week before her death. And she turned around and she said, Putar, and she's turned to her daughter. And um, they were taken in terms to look after her. She said, Putar, can I die? You know, what day is it? And she must have been unconscious and come around. She said, Ma, Mami, uh, you know, it's Vada, Sunday, you know, get in namaz, eh? And she, I think it's Asr or something. And she said, Gaji, what did you say? They had no idea what she's talking about. Absolute no clue. That's what she said. And then she was in her own little world. And then Monday, same thing happened, you know. But the kid had a lot of it. Monday, you know. Um, after, no, it was Monday. Somewhere. And then after. I didn't know it. And, and, you know, uh, what prayer? Like this again. SubhanAllah, this continued all the way until about Wednesday. And then the same thing again. But the kid had a And then she went to I'm getting namaz, and namaz pari riyo. She's changed the tone, namaz pari riyo. Pari riyo ma. Um, thori de rai gya. But they didn't really get what happened. And then what happened was, um, she was sitting there and she's looking. She was like, ye ka hai, ye ka dit, dajani ka dit, dajani ka dit. And she, they didn't know what she was talking about. And she's talking about, koi cheese, ka dit, dir urniya, ka dit, dir urniya. Obviously, you know, she started to make sense now. And she, she, and they said, I mean, get it, she said, and then um, slowly, then she goes, put her eyes on her, get a car, so now that, get a car, so now that, I mean, yeah, oh, my God, but that's the way, so now that, I mean, she knows, she said, I mean, just like a person, do that, so now that, so she started to get an idea of having, she goes, yeah, let me get this one, and now that, she can't see nothing, this is just happening, right, and um, and then she goes, I mean, yes, one, I mean, I think yes, one, I don't know, you know. And then what happened, I remember this very Then Thursday came, Thursday, and I put her in the middle of the day, and I put her in the middle of the day, and I put her in the middle of the day. And then that young chap came half and said to meet her, and he wanted to go back, and I didn't even call her, so I said, I put her in the middle of the day, and I put her in the middle of the day. And that took her um, to the Friday morning, okay? And during the Friday morning, um, their family um, all gathered, and she said, um, again, Kerada Juma, a whole time, Khata, Hundred, Thorha, Hundred, Mulin, Thorin, Fajr, finished, and Allahu Akbar, um, the families all gathered, and the husband, the Nana, he was a bit shy. In Pakistani culture, we have this shyness, you know, people don't, you know, parents, parents don't really sit together, which is, has a beautiful fight as well. And he was sort of shying away in the corner of the room talking to the nurses. And she turned around and she said, <laughs> And she's incredible, Allah Akbar. And she apologized to him. She said, you know, and she made apology, Allah Akbar, that if I had done anything wrong, you know, please forgive me. And then she died and she was leaning forward like this. But it shows you, it's incredible. I mean, the reason why um, I mention it is because um, just, you know, a lot how Allah unveils things for some people. You know, pious people, you know, um, you know they, sometimes you just don't, you won't know who they are sometimes. You can't tell, can you? You just, this is from Allah. This is ikhlas inside the heart. But you can't tell. Sometimes it might be clean shaven. Sometimes, mashallah, have a pure sunnah. Sometimes they have pure sunnah, they do kharab. You know, we've got all sorts of, you know, and the beautiful thing is, uh, you, you can't judge a book by its cover. This is between Allah and His servant. You know, you have no idea, you don't know what work they've done that was so beautiful with Allah that, you know, like they said, you know, it will just take them across. So you, we should not be judgmental as well. You know, we, we should have a good opinion of everybody. And you will see later on, I give you a story, Mabu Hanifa, how a good opinion, you know, 
and good mu'amala. So here they said, Ya Rasulullah, it's as if your, this is your fa'wa muwadda'. And he said, fa'awsina, hey, give us wasiya, give us a reminder. Um, so the Prophet said, usikum bi taqwa Allah azza wa jal. I give you reminder, this is the greatest thing that you can hold on to, taqwa. I saw a Muslim man smoking today, right? And I thought to myself, okay, if I go out there, I will pass him. He's going to get scared. You get it, you know, maybe, you know, like they get that. I thought, well, there's no point. You know, there's no need for him really to be scared. It's good to have haya. Haya is important. But at the end of the day, what are you getting scared of me for? You're not answering to me. You're answering to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's watching you whether you, you know, you know, hide it from you, no, whatever, it's between you and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, that's your dealing with Allah directly. Nobody else can judge you. This is beautiful about this religion. You don't need to come to an Imam Sahib, like in the Catholic religion, in order to link with Allah. No, sometimes Imam Sahib can't link with Allah and you can. You see, Allah opens these doors for different people. And here in our religion, you just raise your hand, you talk, direct. Direct, and you don't need, you know, sometimes there is. Rasulullah, so we use that wasila, you know. You know, Ya Rasulullah, we use that wasila, Oh Allah, for the sake of Allah, we use that sometimes. But generally we have this, you know, Allah opens these doors. So they said, they said oh, seek me, I give you advice, have taqwa of Allah. It's not easy. Taqwa is everything. It's not something you're just born with, sometimes, really. Then you got to work hard for it. And this is Rosa, you can see. There you are, you know, haram comes your way, you try and look away, your shaitan, you know, not shaitan, your nafs now, shaitan is locked up. Before Rosa, you blame everything shaitan. And shaitan is shaitan, shaitan, shaitan. Shaitan is locked up now. Now you know who, who, whether you're a bigger shaitan than shaitan or which way around. You get it. Now you see, you can see, like, right? But that's good, that's, that's part of the whole, you know, Rose, I can't look at Haram, good man. <laughs> you know, because the reason why Rose reminds you of Allah, you're more aware of Allah. So that's why you're saying, I can't look at Haram, man. You know, I, I can't say Haram, I can't swear, I would have sworn normally, but it's Rose, I can't swear. The point is because you're more aware of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and so that's the best thing you have, taqwa. Taqwa, eh, which is, Wherever you are, you're aware of Allah. Do you get it? You're at college, you're at uni, you're in the park all alone, you're in your car in the darkness of the night, in some service station. Wherever you are, taqwa. You have taqwa. You know, you know Allah's watching you. And if you've got that connection, yeah, you've got that, um, what do you call it, um, connectivity, you know, the wireless connectivity. Sometimes you have all four bars. Taqwa is on high. Where do you find taqwa on four bars? In Mecca, on Medina Sharif. You know, you're like so praise God there. You know, you're 100%. You get it? You don't look here, you don't look there, you're not interested. You're like, Allah, Rasul, you get that full bars. You get, you know, your reception, you know, it's full bars. Ramadan, you tend to get that as well. It goes three, four, some people, mashallah. You see, it's outside Ramadan where you start to struggle. Sometimes no signal, you're like, oh, two. No signal. Uh, 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 you know, uh, sometimes you have a signal, and that's where you gotta fight. You gotta, you gotta fight, you gotta keep your connectivity four bars all the time, or six bars, whatever it is, with Allah, having complete awareness, you know, not being love. It's not easy, I'm talking as if it's easy. You know, it's not, it's not like a, you don't go to some, you know, Asda and buy a taqwa kapra you wear and you have full bar. It's not like that. It's something. You have to work for. Do you get it? You must strive for. It, it, it's your, you know, your thing. And, and but, you know, there's rewards for it. Allah opens doors. Allah gives gifts. You won't believe. Sometimes you'll see them like this lady, maybe not in your life, but right at the end. You see, Allah will show you that reward. You won't die without seeing it. You remember that? Allah, inshallah, will show you before you die. Uh, my friend, his mum died. He's died as well, Allah have mercy on him, he died young. And um, he told me the story, and this is probably the only story he ever told me, but it was a brilliant thing, you know. It's one of the greatest things I've heard. He says, Kashmiri again, sorry guys, you're Pakistani, all the stories are Kashmiri today. Uh, sorry man, you know, you know, you know. 
he said his mother was dying. Him and his sister were taking turns to look after her. And um, what happened was, um, he went home. And whilst he went home, his mom died. Right? In the hospitals, what happened? People taking turns and she died, she passed away. So he got a phone call and said, come, you know, his fourth wife been passed away. So he went to the hospital. And he's speaking to his sister, said, what happened? She was hung up, you know, she, she was crying just before she died. Now that, you know, that's a problem here now, because he's like, you know what I said? What were they crying for? Atrul, you know, that Atrul coming down. Why? But who can answer for her? Who's going to give the answer for this? Nobody can give the answer. Do you see? He's stuck. She doesn't know. He doesn't know, but it's troubling him. Why was she crying? He went back home. That night, he said, and he went to sleep, and he goes, Allah, he's from Derby, okay, you know, not, I'm not talking about 100 years ago, 10,000, you know, 10 hundred years ago, some man, pious man, no, one of us, and he goes, I went back home, and I went to sleep, before the janazah, well, this was, and he goes, I saw my mum in my dream, and I said, I mean, you know, I said, what were you crying for? He goes, but the, and this is beautiful, right, because you can relate to these women, like men and women in your houses. Because Putta, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala showed me the reward of my tahajjud prayer. Just before the tahajjud goes out, so they were praying tahajjud. Allah showed her the reward of her tahajjud prayer. I didn't go to waste. You think, ah, rati wa tita, you know, is not. Every night, Amidjan sitting there, mashallah, you think it's going to go to waste. Before she died, Allah, because Allah showed me my tahajjud prayer and I cried out of happiness. Because remember, you have two types of tears, don't you? You have you know, tears of happiness and tears of sadness. They were tears of happiness. He's crying tears of sadness. She's crying tears of happiness. But you can't tell, can you? And that's why, so the point is, don't belittle. And don't think these are Nikki and these are like, they're not weighty. You get it? They're weighty. Little, little things. Maybe you're not praying to hide you. Maybe your biggest thing is, you want to give food to your next door neighbor. You know, your English neighbor, everyone's on pakore, oh, hush, oh, hey. Yeah, got free pakoras, you know. And you don't see that. We make so much food, it's incredible. But how much food do we make? How many roti goes to waste? Uh, so much java, you know. There's only gore who measure and make the kola. We make kola, you know. But we also throw away kola as well. You get it? That's the problem. You know, if you were to give that other, you don't know. This The point is, you just don't know. And you must invest all of that. That roti should not go to waste. Upper then. And those chawal should not go. This pokore must not be wasted. You see? Eh? And because if you use that in a good way, like that lady, time, time. You know? How long does it take to prepare the hajjud? You know? Outside Rose, you think, me and the hajjud are innocent. Only it's you, your brain the hajjud at night. You getting up is incredible. You will get up three o'clock in the morning. You can't believe yourself. Maybe you chewed out. Nobody can believe because you're the same one snoring away. <coughs> Our house is shaking. But now, mashallah, you're up for tahajjud. How? Oh. Yeah, you're up for tahajjud. How did you get for tahajjud? And you, you don't believe yourself. And Allah is giving you tawfiq. And if you try, you put effort, niyat, you know, a bit of effort, Allah makes it work. You can see, it's incredible. You, you outside Rosa, you're going to make it to the masjid for one namaz. Masha Allah, you're coming to the masjid five times a day. Outside Rosa, couldn't even open Quran Sheep, you know. Alif Lam mean, oh, for like, yeah. Oh, you know, Shaitan plays games, you can't get past the pain. Masha Allah, you are on your own course to finish your Quran. And if you, you can do it. The point you can do it. You get it? So that lady, Allah have mercy on her. Allah showed her huh, her tahajjud reward before she passed away. Okay, and so the point is, you know, here the Prophet says, "Usiqum bi taqwa Allah." I give you wasiyah of taqwa of Allah, wasama wa taqa, and to listen and to be obedient. You must listen. You have you've heard this before. Why have you got one tongue and two ears? Not to talk too much. To listen more than you talk. You see, they listen. Okay, if you listen and look at Subhanallah, um, what about those deaf people who can't listen? And I told you that question yesterday. What about those deaf people who can't listen? They can't hear. 
You know, they can't hear them. You know, whoever's, those who, you know, there's a mandat Arab. Whoever's got children will know I'm talking about. You know when your children speak and they're young? How it's so sweet. You know when they're, uh, not when they're teenagers, but when they're young. <laughs> teenagers can be if they're good, mashallah. When the, those words that come out of your children's mouth, Ammi, Abu, you know, and they say silly things, two, three, how beautiful do they sound? Imagine Allah took your hearing away, huh? and you couldn't hear what your own children, you can just see their mouths. Don't belittle these blessings. You know, you look at your mother, you look at your father, you look like, you know, you look at your children, how much khushi comes into you. You know, you see, so they do something. So you know, they do harakata, you know, they do certain things, you think, subhanAllah, you know, and you kid you, yeah, but, but it makes you so happy. Imagine you lost your eyes and you couldn't see your own children. Imagine you just never knew what your children looked like. You never knew, you know, I mean, what your friend, what, you have to touch their nose to know, what, you know, who is this? You don't belittle these blessings, man. People think, oh, I ain't got jack in my life. They're all dead. Nothing, bro, you know? Really nothing. <laughs> Go to somebody who's blind or somebody who's deaf or somebody who can't move their hand or paralyzed. So this young girl yesterday, Jamaican, she was par her leg was disfigured. And I thought, Allah, <coughs> you know, you, they look normal, but when she was walking, she was walking with a strange limb. Allah, but Allah not give, you know, look at us, Allah, but so beautiful. Everything, mashallah, you know, unless we've messed it up. You get it, don't you? shouldn't. So listen and be obedient. And this is beautiful. Even, okay, and he said here, look, and I advise you to, let's translation for this, um, even if a slave is made or commanded over you, that times will come where you might have slaves, people from low, low, low costs. You get it? You know, Metro three full on that. Hey, puta is give me up. No way. You know what I mean? We have this thing, isn't it? Even though we never decided to be the caste that we're in, it was all decided by Allah. But obviously, we like to, you know, yeah, whatever. But no good. I mean, you don't cast. I mean, it's Kashmir, isn't it? It's Pakistanis, I think, more than anything else. I'm sure good and not talk about caste, do they? Just we have that. That's specific to us. Hey, hey, but the Prophet is touching on this. Even if Allah makes a slave commanding over you, if that's the case, that happens. Look, in Syria, Shia government, 10%, maybe even less than that of the total population, they're in charge in power. You see, or they were, inshallah, for limited days. But the point is, that happens sometimes. But Allah puts people over you, you think, where did they come from? Well, Sam'a wa ta'a, it's possible. Hey, listen and abide. Okay, even if you're, because hey, whoever lives from amongst you will see a lot of difference, a lot of trouble. A fitan, fitnas will come. Okay, and now look, when the fitna comes, what do I do? That's now. This is the whole. This is the highlight. And when those fitnas come, when those troubled times come, like today, we're in troubled time. We're in strange, strange time. If you don't believe me, just look at the news. What are you going to have? You know, so and so won the gold medal. And beneath it, massacre in Syria. I mean, just look at that. I mean, really, a gold medal goes above massacre, you know, or um, torture, or kidnap, or four killed in Moses, I don't know, whatever. You get this. Do you see what type of times we live in? Where some sport or leisure is more important. So when you go to your knees, what do you do on your phone? You go straight to the news, you go straight to the sport, check the football scores. I look at, I then get the guilty conscience, right? Then I better check how the Muslims are doing as well, and they're being killed in the world. Do you get it? But it's what's more important to check if Man United are losing or not. You know, are they going to win the title or not? Thank God they did it. Hey, you know, that's more important. Okay, do you see where, where, we're, where we're at? We're living in these times. That's just, can you imagine? If you ask people, there would be times like this, they, they would say, no way, it's not possible people be so good. But we are, so we're living in weird times. So he goes, when those times come, فَعَلَيْكُمْ Okay, when those times come, فَعَلَيْكُمْ Then upon you, a hey, sunnah, grab the sunnah. 
turn to the Sunnah of the Prophet. فَعَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّةِ وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلُفَاءِ رَاجِلٍ And the Sunnah of the rightly guided Khalifas. What about the Sunnah? How do I deal with the Sunnah? How do I grab the Sunnah? How do I hug the Sunnah? How do I use the Sunnah? Incredible. He said, عَضُّوا عَلَيْهَا بِالنَّوَاجِدِ A Hazul Park is Sunnah and the Sunnah of the Khulafai Rajdin. Don't just hold it. Don't just grab it. A bite onto the Sunnah with your molar teeth. عضو. عض means to bite. Chak marna. That's what عضو means in Arabic. Bin nawadi nawadi molar teeth. Like this. A bite onto it. Solid. That's a bite. You don't let go. You see? And someone tries to pull it out. Hey, no, no, no. This is an incredible metaphor by the Prophet. Hey, bite on with it with your molar teeth. That's how you should hold on to the Sunnah of the Prophet. Huh? Hey, no here and there. No slipping. Solid. عَلَيْكُمْ بِسُنَّتِي وَسُنَّةِ الْخُلُفَاءِ الرَّاشِدِينَ الْمَهْدِينَ Okay. وَإِيَّاكُمْ وَمُحْدِثَاتِ الْأُمُورِ And then he warned us, okay. And he said, be aware of newly introduced matters. Be aware of bid'as, new matters. فَإِنَّ كُلَّ مُحْدَثَةٍ بِدْعَةٍ وَكُلَّ بِدْعَةٍ ضَلَالَةٍ وَكُلَّ ضَلَالَةٍ فِي النَّارِ And then he said, um, for every newly introduced matter is an innovation. Every innovation is going astray. And every strength is in the fight. And inshallah, we will speak about this bid'ah and innovation and these categories. So here, the point I was trying to make is, you know, it's very important to learn about the Sunnah of the Prophet You see, very important because you're supposed to hang on to it, solid. But how are you going to hang on to it when you don't know what it is? You see, so that's why it's important to learn. Like Allah says, go, you know, and know that amongst you the Prophet of Allah, Hey, what do you know about the Prophet In reality, we're so lucky, you know, unlike other religions, you know, you go to a Christian and say, well, look, you know, I'm, I, I'm, I've just got married and I want to know how to live like Jesus. I mean, what do they say to you? <coughs> what can they say to you? Well, we can't say much because Jesus, Ali, so I never got married. So, well, um, you know, um, you know, warfare, jihad, what can they say to you? I say to Jack, stuck. You know, um, say you know, I've become a granddad, mashallah. You know, what shall I do? You know, can't say nothing to you. They couldn't tell you how to, um, how because Isa alayhi salam was not a granddad. He was not a grandfather. You know, Rasulullah salam was a grandfather. You can, you can learn from you know, you're a dada or you know, or a grandmother even. You know, you can you, you can learn so much. That the Prophet would be praying and be jumping on his back, you think, subhanAllah, okay, so nothing, sort of knocking them off, you know, tika you know, okay, you know, um, you know running under, under your prayer, while you're praying underneath you, do you get it? Now, it's normal to pick up your children or your grandchildren, put them on your Monday walk, you know, now you can do that normal thing and know it's the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. You see, um, you know, maybe you can hear your uh, pota crying at night. Pani, Pani, Ami, Pani, Mama, Dad are too tired, they won't sleep because they're watching Star TV all night. They can't wake up to say the child. So Dad gets up. What's wrong? Put the Pani, Dad, Pani, do thrilling. You know, so he can now go and get water. He can't, he, instead of telling us, I'm going to take a look at you. You know, Pani, I'm going to take a look at you. I'm going to take a look at you. No, because the Prophet Sassan did so. He did this. When Hassan Ali Salam was, Crying, he got up وسلم, and went to the house of Fatima with water. And he said, he knocked on the door, said, Fatima opened the door, and he said, Where's Hassan? And Hussein, who was younger, and put his hand out, I want water too, I'm, I'm thirsty. And he was just, he gave to Hassan out first. So he gave Hassan water. Oh, that doesn't have to get into that whole, you know, masculine, you know, thing, the whole. No, it's Sunnah of the Prophet But a Christian can't do none of those things and follow his Prophet. And, and you, know, you see, you can't do that. Um, um, how do I treat my wife? How do I treat my daughter? The Prophet would stand up for Fatima to Zahra when she would enter. He would stand for her. He would kiss her on the forehead and make her sit in his place. Wow. And when he would come from traveling, he would come to the masjid. Pray in the masjid and then go see Sayyidina Fatima first before anybody else. 
Allah, Akbar. A Christian can't do that. No, a Jew can't do that. You see, uh, all the other, they don't have that example. We have that example. We, I mean, we have an example for everything. How to eat. I mean, even to, yes, yes, even for cleaning in the bathroom. We have, we know what to do. We know exactly how to clean. As the Prophet taught us, it's mad. It's incredible how much detail, how much information we have about Rasulullah You know, you're sitting, wherever you're sitting, you know you can sit either like this, you know, Rasulullah sat like this, on his knees, he sat, subhanAllah, once he sat leaning forward like this in the masjid, leaning like that, so far forward that this girl came in, she was all struck by his sitting. Because you don't, you don't expect Rasulullah to be, you know, sitting. It was a very humble sitting, this is. Is it leaning forward? Sometimes we sit like this, you know, when you're sad, maybe you really want to, you, know, you want to make dua, you know, it's incredible. When, when Allah sends musibta on you, it forces you to go down like this. Hello, you do this, you know, walking like, mashallah. Musibta break your back, and then you're like, Ya Allah. You see, it's, and so here, she got very scared. You know, and he sat like this, but he also he he, he made her calm down. So here he sat like this. You know, he lied down, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, with his hand behind his um, head, with his one leg over the other like this. And you think, wow, you know, you're sitting on your sofa and I'm watching your TV. I mean, he wasn't watching TV, but you know, you got your remote in your hand. But the point is, you could just say, oh, I said no. It's incredible, well, Allah, it's incredible, and that's what Shemaya, this whole book is about that. And look at that, you know, the volume, four or five volumes on the detail, or how, and inshallah we won't get into that one day, inshallah. So here, you know, Sunnah is very important. Now look, here the point is that they ask for wasiyah, was, uh, or nasiha, okay, or wasiyah, a reminder. And I want to touch upon this, and I'll end with this, and I, what, what time is it, if you don't mind, I can't see that. Okay, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something which is not normal. I'm going to end the lesson early today. You know why? Just, it's, it's just a um, polit political thing, Shafat, but don't worry. <laughs> People have this thing inside, isn't it? If it goes on for an hour, don't tell them I'm telling you this, you know? When you finish early, they feel great. Wow, man, we have finished early today, you know? So, just, I've got to do one of those moves, okay? Um, so, but don't tell them I told you that, okay? So, but just here, Mo'idha, okay, Mo'idha, wow, this is very important, we've got better people here, we've got younger people here, um, but this is a very important aspect of our religion, <coughs> giving a reminder, how do I give somebody nasihat? You know, most cases, in early days, now it's changed now, but you know, you like, Tunane, Tak, you know, you get it, it's like a lot of violence, and trying to get a point into this son's head, <laughs> you know, you get all sorts of things. I mean, they, I, you know, in the masjid to Sabakrin, yeah, you come late, you know, Gan I love that. <laughs> oh, don't do it, don't worry. But Gan that, that whole, you know, is that really how you get, um, you want this boy to pray? How do I make him pray? Kick him? Yeah, kick him and beat him, he's going to pray namaz now, you know. Um, he's going to hate Namaz. He's going to hate you, and he's going to hate what you wanted to do as well. And I saw this happen, I, you know, as a child. I remember, I may have told you this. Um, I was teaching a man in Croydon, and um, we were reading Quran. I'm sure I told you this. Um, we were reading Quran, so he he was reading. I was listening to him. He couldn't read Buddha. I mean, he was like 65, 70. He couldn't read. He could not read. So. Okay, we read a page, I was fixing the mistake. Then he realized, Maria Latiyan Bowen, you know, okay, he goes, you read, yeah, you read the word, word, and I'll read after you. I said, okay, that's Alif Lamim, We read all the way up to Ulaika. Dead page, you know, half, one and a half page, and then he stopped. And he's, he's wearing them multi-million pound house. In terms of dunya, he's got everything. A multi-million pound house. You know, mashallah, in London, you know, whatever. They've got deen, they want to learn, you know. And my man started to cry. Buddha me, you know, 70 years old. 
I didn't know what to do, you know, hug him, not to hug my poor master cat, you know, I was like, what are you supposed to do? He started crying, you know, and then he swore, or he said something very bad about a man who taught him Quran when he was young. And he goes, oh, Fulan, something, you know, if had he not hit me and turned me away from the mustard, I wouldn't be in this state today. He had not read Quran all his life. All he wanted to do was, he had cancer, by the way, I found out afterwards. That's why it's more serious. He wanted to read the book of Allah. He loves the book of Allah. He just wanted to read it once before he died. You see how desperate he was? You read, I read after you. You get it? And he was so sad about that man, whoever he was, who in a village in Pakistan, who turned him away from the mustard because of violence, that for 60 years he never went back to the mustard. Do you see how serious it is? And whose guna is that going to be? That teacher who never learned to teach. Because if you're a teacher, you're supposed to learn from who? From the Prophet ﷺ. Go and learn how the Prophet taught. There's a book out there, 40 different techniques that the Prophet used to teach. 40 techniques. And not even a single one you're going to find. Kan pakar and all that. Yeah, I mean, sometimes you need it, but you know. Maybe out of England, <laughs> where it's legal, you know. Yeah, Allah protect. So um, here, um, maybe tomorrow, inshallah, okay? Tomorrow we will speak about how to give a reminder. Now, see, we have children. You get it? It's incredible. You just look at the Prophet of how he gave these reminders. How to give reminders. What's the adab? How's the technique of reminding somebody? You know, he's not doing wuzu properly, how to tell him? Baba, I'm not married, Baba. You know, how to tell Baba, you know, say wuzu, you know, how to tell them? I can't go up to him and say that to him. And it's rude as well. Baba, I can't get this, but this is how to get wuzu. I can't say that to him, you get it? In the Maza, I'm just saying, you can't do that. Adab, adab, this is called adab. This is adab, this is adab of it. This is why this Islam is so beautiful, because it's full of adab. When you do something in adab, like you, I can, you know, I can, you can tell somebody off and break their heart, you know, and make them cry and, and hate you, but you've got the message across to them, or you're smart enough to do, to get the same message, you know, into their heart, okay, without doing that. Hey, I could put my golden ring, I ain't got one, but, you know, my wife's jewelry into a box in a security box, right, by putting in the, the pin code in, you know, and slowly just turning and opening it. Or, you know, like when you forget, I can't remember, I can't bother ringing your head to I know, tuck, 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 but you throw it in there, you know, you put the martial art, got the, you know, gold thing in, but then you realize you've broken it now, it's not rocking anymore. Uh, you get it? It's the same thing here. Hey, hey, you know, you want to get something in, there's an adab of doing it, we have a prophetic other of it, we have a... Islam is beautiful. You see, there's a way of doing it. And inshallah, look at that. The other of putting a nasihat in and getting that message across. And also the one who's giving nasihat, he has to have those prerequisites. Any get just anybody can give nasihat. And before you tell me what to do, do you do it yourself? And if you don't do it yourself, it's not going to go into my heart. <laughs> because the condition of it going into the heart, that it comes from the heart. It don't come from the heart, it hasn't gone to the heart. That's just something you can't see. And so, inshallah, we'll speak about the Torah. Um, wa sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad wa alayhi wa sallam. Any questions? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Anybody? That's good. If you don't ask a question, I'm a very happy man. You know, don't worry. You don't, don't feel like, I've got to ask a question. Don't worry. This is, this is not, it's good. The Sahaba has very few questions. It is this phenomena? Let's throw a question. In their time, they, they never did this. If there was a need, they asked. If there's no need, they never asked. So how about beautiful? Do you get it? Uh, very. Did it? When there was a zurut, they asked. No zurut. Alhamdulillah. Sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Muhammad wa alaihi wasallam. Jazallah wa anna Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ahluh wa bil fatiha to the soul of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and all the sahaba karam and Allah reward them and give them lofty makan and the tabi'een and all those people in that chain who have you know brought this knowledge to us or preserved this knowledge that reached us 
Allah have mercy on them, Ya Rabbil Alameen, and all our parents and mothers and fathers and grandfathers and uncles and aunts that have passed away, Ya Rabb, for the sake of this blessed month and you know, this blessed place and this blessed time and these beautiful people that are here, Ya Rabb, please have shower your mercy on them, forgive their sins, and make their graves expansive and meadows from um, from the you know meadows of paradise. Ya Rabbi, please don't make it a pit from the pit of hellfire. Allah, you know, take us by our hand. Ya Rabbi, we don't know how to make dua. Teach us how to make dua. Ya Rabbi, we don't know how to do good. Ya Rabbi, teach us how to do good. Ya Rabbi, we're always, you know, intending and failing. Ya Rabbi, give us tawfiq and give us the, you know, the, the energy and the strength needed to be firm on this deen. Ya Rabbi, we want to love you and, and get closer to you and love your Prophet and get closer to him. Ya Rabbi, please, for the sake of this Allah and for the sake of the people of Badr, because today is yawm e badr Ya Allah, for the sake of people of Badr, those Sahaba who, who stood next to your Prophet and defended your Prophet and fought in your way, Ya Allah, and you love what they did, Ya Allah, for their sake. Ya Allah, give us whatever we need to be in a position where you love us and Rasulullah loves us, Ya Rabbi Alameen. Ya Allah, have mercy on all our brothers and sisters in the East and the West and wherever they are and specifically in Kashmir and Pakistan and, and in Syria Ya Rabbil Alameen SubhanAllah Rabbika Rabbil Izzid Ya Rabbil Alameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Ya Rabbil Alameen Ya Rabbil Alameen